Okay, in this video, we're going to discuss how to, uh, when given a sequence, write both the recursive rule and the explicit rule to describe that sequence. Um, so we're basically doing two different ways of describing the same thing. So what we've got up top in this table is a sequence, and here's our sequence here. There's our sequence of numbers with the position number shown above it. The number in the first position is 2,000, in the second position is 2,500, so on and so forth. And so well, let's start with writing the recursive rule because that one's a little bit easier. Now, if you remember, a recursive rule is a rule that describes a term's position based on the previous term. And so we have a way of describing the previous term. So here's my f of n to describe my function. So for any given term, we basically, in layman's terms, we know it's going to be the previous term. And for this sequence, plus 500. And you can see that 500 because that's the common difference. I see it all over the place. See, I, I add 500 to get from my first term to my second term. I add 500 to get from my second to my third term. So we can see that common difference is 500. So if I'm describing, if I'm back over here now describing my recursive um, rule, I know that it's going to be the previous term plus 500. And the question is, how do we describe the previous term? And what we've learned previously is our way of describing the previous term is say f of n minus 1. Because we know f of n is whatever term we're talking about. And so f of n minus 1 means we're subtracting 1 from that. We're finding the previous term plus 500. Okay? So if you're writing a recursive rule, this f of n minus 1 will always be in it. That will always be in it somewhere. And then after it, it's going to be your common difference, either plus a number or minus a number for arithmetic sequences, okay? Now let's look over here at the explicit rule. And this is a little bit more complicated, and I'm going to walk you this a little bit differently than your book does. So we're going to start with our f of n again. But what I want to do is I want to start my sequence back one step, okay? So this is for the explicit rule. I'm going to start my sequence. If I were to go backwards and say, zero before my sequence started, what was our starting amount basically? And so I could kind of see if, I, if I'm going up by 500 every time, I can see that this number would be a 1500. So it's almost like we began with a 1500 before our sequence even started. So if I'm writing my explicit rule, I basically want to backtrack and if there is a thing, find the value of the term in the zeroth position and start with that. Then we know that for each term, we're adding 500. So it's almost like a rate of change problem. We're doing 500 times n plus the 1500 gives us our explicit rule. And just because it's kind of hard to visualize this, we can practice it with some numbers if we want. For example, f of 1, if I put a 1 in for n in this, it should give us the value of our term in the first position. So I'm doing a little extra here in case you don't believe me that this works. So plus 1,500. And you can see that if I simplified that, it would be 500 plus 1,500, which is 2,000. So we see that our explicit rule works for this first step. Now let's go, let's try it for, our, say, our fourth one. If I did f of 4, that's going to be equal to 500 times 4 plus 1,500. I can see that's going to be 2,000 plus 1,500. So f of 4 is 3,500. We're good once again. We see that our explicit rule works for those terms in the sequence. So that's something where it might not be a bad idea to check your explicit and your recursive rule and make sure they work. Um, but I know that's a lot that I threw at you. I threw at you two different topics. So let's practice it with another slide. So here I give you another sequence. And let's find both the recursive and the explicit rule for it. So we're going to start with recursive because that's our easy one, right? And so I'm just going to write up above these real small. I like to remember what position each of those numbers are in. Uh, 100's in our first position, 88's in our second position, so on and so forth. And so for our recursive rule... If you would remember, uh oh, sorry, my stylus isn't working well. It's going to be our previous term plus our 
common difference. And so for, we can see our common difference here is it looks like we're going down by 12 every time in this arithmetic sequence. So um, I could say plus a negative 12 for my common difference, or instead of plus a negative 12, I could just change this to minus 12. Because we know that this recursive rule is whatever our previous term is, minus 12 will give you the next term. Now the question is, how do we write out this previous term? And if you remember, our way of writing it is that it's f of n minus 1. So the previous term, minus 12, gives you uh, whatever you're looking at. And that's your recursive rule. That, we're done there. Now let's look over at our explicit rule. This is the one that's a little more complicated. So for our explicit rule, what we like to do is we like to backtrack our pattern, basically, and see if there was such thing as a zeroth term, or before this started, what number would be here? And I think we can see that's a 112. Because if this pattern continued, we have to subtract 12 to make it into that 100, that first term. So I know that that starting value, this value I'm going to tack on to the end, it's like a y-intercept, if you will, is 112. And then what we're going to do after that is we are going to put our common difference next to n. So our explicit rule for the function is negative 12n plus 112. Okay, so we've done two examples now. Hopefully you can find the, both the recursive rule and the explicit rule.